All right, Mark. A recent study, a Canadian study that was published in New England Journal of Medicine, they looked at the very large cohort of patients and doctors. And as you remember, years ago, uh, the ACGME, the graduate uh, medical uh, office, came in and said the residents have been co on call uh, for more than 24 hours or they're working more than 80 hours a week. They're dangerous because the complicant can cause fatigue. They may not perform in the operating room, and they may cause complications within the 30 days after surgery. But this study says completely otherwise. Uh, can you tell the people out there exactly what this is about? Well, you know, this study is looking at attending physicians. It's looking at people who have been in training for a really long time. It's up in Canada where they could track every single physician and patient because of, you know, the, uh, the way the health insurance is up there. And so it's a huge study of close to 40,000 uh, patients and almost, almost 2,000 physicians. It's looking at one night, one night in the day of a physician where if you operated after midnight and then the next day you have another case, how did that case do? And they're talking about elective procedures like knee and hip replacements, spinal surgery. And they concluded that after a month, David, the, the amount of complications, including death, uh, sec secondary complications, infections, et cetera, wounds, those were not increased by a tired surgeon from the night before. But again, it, wasn't, it didn't look at it long term over many months. I think here the key is that the study author thinks that surgeons, once they reach, say, your level, although I don't know any of your level, but let's just say Thank your you. level, can control the clock well enough so that you wouldn't operate if you were overtired. I think that's where the study is going. Yeah, I agree with you. And I think the key to this study is that the attendings, as opposed to residents, were looked at. And, you know, of course, as an attending, um, if you're exhausted and you're fatigued, you never go to the operating room and you can change your schedule, you can move the cases around. I can also tell you, and, and I will mention it today, that, that surgeons are, are like military, navy, or uh, army. Um, uh, we are trained to really go through years of, of uh, training and dealing with fatigue. You know, the surgical residency is brutal. As you remember, we were pulling like 36 hours uh, of, of call and trauma calls, etc. So to some extent, your body is used to it and you can function under a lot of stress. And that's the difference between surgeons and, and medical doctors. Um, personally, I think like once a year, I may feel, uh, you know, the fatigue factor. And it, you've seen me talk to the patient saying that today is not a good day and we're not going to do the surgery. It's very rare that happens, but you always have to do the right thing for the patient, obviously. Right, which I agree with everything you just said. I would add to that that earlier studies did show that long term it's probably still a good idea to get six hours of sleep a night or more. 100%. We're not telling people out there whether they're pilots or train engineers or certainly top surgeons to be sleep deprived in general. Absolutely.